Now it's time for the rant wheel. You know how it works. We spin the wheel wherever it lands. We talk about the topic. This week on the wheel, we have Space Force, Emily in Paris, Lamar Odom versus Aaron Carter, PlayStation 5, Oreos, Valentine's Day, Super Bowl ads, and cooking at home. Now, we're going to do things a little bit differently on the rant wheel this week. So you're about to hear rants uh, from me, from Langston, from Aaron Ryan, from Ira Madison, from Travis. And, um, you know, that's it. It has landed on Space Force, and here to rant about the topic, the host of Hysteria, returning champion, Aaron Ryan. <laughs> I didn't realize that this was a contest. It's I thought this contest. was just... Life is oh, a contest. It's nice to know that I'm a champion, though. I have, My trophy must have gotten lost in the mail. Here's why I'm ranting about Space Force. A couple days ago, um, one of the kind of wild-eyed Trumpist grifters tried to stoke up the outrage cycle against the White House press secretary, Jen Psaki, by sending the following tweet. Jen Psaki mocked our service heroes. There's nothing funny about the Space Force. Au contraire, grifter. Everything is funny about the Space Force because objectively bad ideas that stupid people love are funny. Um, so I know a lot of people have pointed out that Space Force is stupid um, because there's been a sort of drip, drip, drip of like, bad ideas that have come out around this new branch of the military. Um, but this Trump land grifter tweeting that about Jen Psaki really gave me an opportunity to kind of put all of those drips together into an ocean of stupidity. Okay, so first mm -hmm. of all, the Space Force logo is bad. It's ripped off directly from one of the Star Treks, and it is very, very silly. Um, second, the name is bad. Like, conceptually... The title sounds like something a six-year-old boy would come up with. And it also kind of brings to mind, like, what, what are we forcing in space? What is the point of a space army? Have we declared war on the moon? Did President Trump watch the movie Alien and think it was a documentary like he thought Sicario was a documentary about crossing the border? A lot of questions about why we're calling it Space Force. Sicario is a documentary about... What happens when the lead character in a movie doesn't do anything? Sorry, go on, as you were saying. <laughs> I mean, I've fallen asleep in it three times, so I'll take your word for it. So third, the people in the Space Force are called Guardians. Guardians. Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, there's already a movie about people in space who are Guardians, and it's called Guardians of the Galaxy, which is a better name than Space Force. But also, like, the word Guardians, it evokes protection. And I'm trying to think of something that could come from space that could hurt me or Earth that a person could stop. Literally nothing. A comet, beam, what are you going to do with that space force? A sunstorm, you're going to fly into the sun? You're going to stop it from interfering with the magnetic field? You're going to uninvent magnetism? If all the women in the military were declared a new branch of the military and called uh, the bitch squadron, or if a president... Cool. No, I Actually, I would probably join the bitch squadron. But That sounds good, though. Or if all the Navy midshipmen who went in submarines were renamed the Wet Boys, the Space Force. So you're <laughs> still, you're not, you're just coming up with good ideas. I think the Wet Boys would be funny. I would want or to be friends with a, mm -hmm. <laughs> with a Wet Boy. But here's the thing. Space Force already exists. It is part of the Air Force, just as the Wet Boys are already in the Navy. Uh, we do not need an, uh, another distinction and another way for us to funnel money to the military that A, doesn't make us any safer, B, doesn't benefit any members of the actual Space Force. It is an invented bureaucratic layer with every possible aspect of it is stupid yep. and funny. Everything about Space Force is funny, and I hope... President Biden puts Space Force back where it belongs, which is in the Air Force and also maybe declaring war on the moon. Very good points. Uh, I'll add only a couple small things. One, the uniforms are not good. They may have had some nerds on this, but we needed some some gay nerds on this. And <laughs> I would like to see uh, 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 a reconsideration of the uniform. Uh, now, uh, I do have some problem with this being in the Air Force because... Uh, in Star Trek, uh, they use sea terms. You're an admiral, you know, you're okay. a captain, and okay. I would like of a ship, you know? And uh -huh. so uh, uh, I would consider whether or not we think of the of space as a big sea, you know? Not so mm -hmm. much sky as a big ocean, you mm -hmm. know? 
for mm-hmm. vessels. Yeah, I mean, there's like dark matter in vessels. space. Yeah, there's dark matter out there, but not very much of anything else. But the Guardians thing is sort of evocative of like heaven themed stuff, like it, angels. It's it's too pop culture. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, Star Trek, like use them fine, but like go deeper if you're looking for sci fi from which to draw inspiration. <laughs> It has landed on Emily in Paris, here to rant about the topic, host of Keep It, returning champion, Iron Madison III. Hi, John. Returning champion? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Why not? I, I've won the rant wheel before. There were prizes. I didn't get one. Well, everyone takes this compliment and is like, where's my trophy? Says something about our generation. <laughs> or my Where? parachute gift card. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Emily in Paris. <laughs> We all love it. It's everyone's favorite show. What do you got to say about it? For those who don't know, Emily in Paris was nominated this week for a Golden Globe Mm -hmm. for Best Series. And (laughs) Lily Collins was nominated for Best Actress in a Comedy. I have a lot of thoughts about this. And they could involve Michaela Cole and I may destroy you not being nominated Mm -hmm. but they are mostly on the fact that i feel like i did this i feel like i did this i feel Uh like tommy vitor did this Mm -hmm. i feel like tastemaker john and emily favreau did this it's all our fault you think that um you think we moved the culture you think crooked moved the culture I think we did. I think Crooked took a hard stance on Emily in Paris is watchable. It's fun. Tommy was always tweeting about it. Tommy and now well, Tommy pretended he didn't like it and then had this funny way of watching it in its entirety by himself. Um, I will say I'm, I am surprised that you think that, look, you tell me that we've got some pull with Emmy voters. I'll believe you. But why? I don't know about our pull with the Hollywood foreign press. Okay, so this is, I have to explain this because it goes all the way to the top. Wow. Follow the. (laughs) Now. Uh, Ira Anon. (laughs) (laughs) Who does the Hollywood foreign press love? Stars. Who have they gifted before? Mia Farrow. Who do they love? Wow. Mia Farrow and her family, Ronan Farrow, Mm -hmm. your fiance. This is Mm -hmm. all to get to Ronan. You bet. That makes a ton of sense. That's why they voted for Emily and That really checks out. um, uh, Just to apply your theory, can you also make that theory apply to uh, the film The Tourist, starring Johnny Depp, (laughs) previous uh, honoree of the Hollywood Farm Press? Mm, You know... I don't know. Cro- Cricket's not responsible for that, though. <laughs> it's before our time. It's before our time. Uh, look, although I do mm-hmm. support accolades for the tourists because it does star my favorite white woman, Angelina Jolie. I never saw the tourists, but I just remember that there's some kind of unholy twist in it that does not make any sense. That's all that I know about the Johnny Depp, Angelina Jolie two hander, the tourist. <laughs> Yeah, I've never actually seen it because I love her no too much to watch it. No but one has, yeah. I support that for her. But this is what the Globes do. They nominate nonsense. <laughs> Aaron Taylor Johnson has a acting trophy for nocturnal animals. I just it's just so every year it feels like we do this and every year everyone's like, I can't believe these nominees and it's like every year's like it's just like like a couple dozen Italian people. Just being like, yeah. uh, they came to a, a party. party. <laughs> oh, you did it too. <laughs> actually, the only nomination I'm actually mad about is <laughs> Hamilton. How did Disney Plus convince the HFPA that that Hamilton recording of a theater production that I watched on Disney Plus is a motion picture. I mean, it is. It is. Is it? It is. 
I mean, it's, you know, look, I. You, the, it's a live special. <laughs> It is a live special. It is a live special, a live special or special. Ver- slash variety it, show. Yes, it, it is. That's right. It's an event. It should be nominated alongside. It should have. If it should, it should have to fight against Grease Live. You know. Yeah. Or carpool karaoke. <laughs> All right. Let's spin it again. It has landed on Oreos. So, Ira, uh, uh, thank you for being here for this. Um, I I have a sickness. Do you like the Chromatica Oreos? So, first of all, I haven't even... Look, I don't know where these Chromatica Oreos are. They have not made it to the part of the country I'm currently in. But uh, really? I don't... Oh, where are you? I'm in Connecticut. Oh. Eat the pizza. Right. Uh, Catherine but, Hepburn. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I am up here. Do you think Catherine Hepburn used to uh, get depressed and eat thirty three out of thirty six Oreos from the box? Probably. I am eating too many Oreos and I can't stop. I had thirty three out of thirty six from a box, and I thought I'd showed restraint. That was in a twenty four hour period. Um, mm. But you raised Catherine Hepburn. I will share this because I do think it's funny, which is that um, uh. Mia has a handwritten recipe called Catherine Hepburn's Brownies. <laughs> <gasps> and um, they're pretty good. How have you never cooked them, like, on your show with Priyanka? Or sent me the recipe to cook them? It's honestly never occurred to me. <laughs> I want to make these brownies now. This is so upsetting. <laughs> Lewis would the kill thing. you. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's a lot of things that I would go to Katherine Hepburn to ask. Fashion questions, acting questions, style questions, <laughs> performance questions. Uh, uh, how do you, you uh, questions about character and and uh, 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 integrity. Here's what I don't go to Katherine Hepburn about, which is brownies, <laughs> because as a rule, just, just. <laughs> <laughs> just not what I would go to her for. To, like, you don't go to somebody with those cheekbones and ask them for dessert recipes. You know what I mean? You mm. go to somebody with these cheekbones. <laughs> you go to somebody with softer features. That's all that I'm saying. But they're pretty good. Ronan made them. They're pretty good. They're mm. pretty good. The Catherine Hepburn brownies. Maybe I should make those with Priyanka. That's a good idea. You should. Who else has them? I don't know. I, no, I, I actually, just wonder, like, who else Catherine gave this recipe to? That's what I want to know. I don't know. What if it's a? What if this piece of paper is like the only copy, like um, one of those Nicolas Cage things? You know? Oh, like book it's of a treasures, treasure, book of secrets, <laughs> Da Vinci Code. So, are you saying that the Catherine Hepburn's brownie recipe actually reveals some secret, like who killed Natalie Wood? <laughs> Well, it was. Re- <laughs> That's not. A, we know. We know who killed Natalie Wood. Everybody knows that. Uh, <laughs> of course we do. Yeah, it was Jeremy Renner. <laughs> Jeremy Renner. Jeremy <laughs> Renner. After Matt Damon said no. Uh, yeah. When we. <laughs> I don't know what that means. All right. <laughs> Let's end this. It has landed on Super Bowl commercials, and uh, here to rant about the topic, it's Travis, Travis Helwick. I want to begin this rant by saying, I like Tim and Eric, okay? <laughs> and I don't wow. want I don't want okay. Tim or Eric or any fans of them to think that I, I think that they're bad. I actually you think d- that they're you don't great. Like, you like kind of more traditional comedy. I love Tim and Eric. I was very much influenced by them as a young comedian, which I was before mm-hmm. I started working at this bullshit company. Um, and <laughs> now I'm an old, uh, now I'm an uh-huh. old neo lib that gets yelled mm-hmm. at by people for liking Pete Buttigieg too much. Okay, the rant. Tim and Eric ruined Super Bowl commercials. Wow. All right. And here is is what I'll say. Tim and Eric invented a very good style of comedy that was like you know, some kind, it was kind of bad on purpose. And they use like this eighties video style and it was very cool and it was very influential. The downside is that it was very easy to recreate by people who were less talented than them. And so around 2015, 
Tim and Eric started making ads for Old Spice and they involved like a man with his shirt off. It was very fast moving and weird and a lot of strange shit happened and people loved it because it's funny and it's Tim and Eric. From there, every single fucking Super Bowl commercial after those Old Spice ads are the exact same thing. And it involves a weird man punching through mm -hmm. things, 4,000 weird things happen. Like it, it, this year, it's gonna be like Fran Lebowitz on a unicorn, like high-fiving Wayne Brady. Like it'll be, <laughs> it's stupid and there's too many things going on and what I want, I don't want, from now on, I just want the Budweiser frogs back. I want horses that make me cry because they brought the Budweiser over a field. I want like, I want one funny thing. I don't need 40 things. I want an old woman eating a Doritos 3D doing a kickflip. And that's it. Yeah. That's all I want. Tim and Eric is good. Tim and Eric is great. You know, Tim and Eric is great. Forget what Travis said. Tim and Eric are great. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's what I hate is that someone's going to fucking snitch tag Tim and Eric who listen to this <laughs> podcast and be like, I can't believe Travis talked shit about them. And it's going to, they're going to, they don't know that it's not real. God damn it. You've ruined my life. <laughs> That's my rant. It has landed on PlayStation 5. I have waited to talk about this because I felt fortunate to have a PlayStation 5 because I got very lucky and someone sent me the link to get one at the exact moment it was possible for me to get one and they've been quite scarce. And That's how I you got the vaccine, right? That's also how I got the vaccine. Um, uh, I got the vaccine the same way I got the... Uh, the the PlayStation 5, which is somebody replied to me and Josh Gad on Twitter. That's how I got <laughs> both. Um, and it was, in both cases, Deborah Burks, oddly enough. Um, <laughs> I've, I, I, and I love the PlayStation 5 in many respects. I enjoyed the Demon Souls. I then went down a rabbit hole of From Games, and I played Dark Souls 3. Uh, I played Bloodborne again. Had a blast. I'm currently playing Hitman 3. Enjoying it immensely. Love planning my missions. The graphics are beautiful. And I've been reluctant to criticize the PlayStation 5 because it has been such a, a light in the darkness in a period in which there is not much to do. The menus are terrible. The design of the interface is garbage. What did they do? What did they do? PlayStation 3 had a terrible interface. They kind of fixed it for PlayStation 4, and it is currently an absolute shit show. Hold the PlayStation button, you get one menu. Tap it, you get another. Neither one is what you'd expect, and in both respects, the center of the screen is filled with advertisements and genuine bullshit. I got a PlayStation 5 last week, and so mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about. And mm -hmm. it really seems like they continue to advertise the games you've already purchased when you press that button. <laughs> what? What am I? Yeah, no, I, I think Hitman 3 is pretty cool. That's why I was trying to open it, Sony. What's going on? What are these giant cards? When I open a PlayStation 5, I'm not looking for an interface that allows me to reminisce about the levels I played previously on the PlayStation 5. Gigantic <laughs> in the center of the screen. There is a culture around the trophies that you can earn, and I actually have at times enjoyed trying to be a completionist and getting the trophies. I don't know a single person out there who wants their entire game experience to revolve around sharing information about the completion trophies they got in various games. I don't know who wants that. I don't know anyone ever who wants that. Just put a simple fucking thing where you can click on the game you want to play or close the game you don't want to play. Turning the thing off is an, is an ordeal. <laughs> yeah, I never know why the game library isn't the entire screen. I will say it always makes me feel bad when I open that menu because I'm not a completionist. I'm very bad at video games. And it'll be like, did you know you've only completed 60% of this sack boy level? I'm like, oh, I couldn't even win this game for children. <laughs> Like, what is this I'm information? Doing terribly. 50, oh, you're only at 59% through this part of the game. I'm going to the game to continue playing the game. Don't tell me how to complete a video game, all right? I played through Shadow of the Colossus like three dozen times to get onto the roof of the temple, all right? And if you know what I'm talking about... No idea. Well, you have to... It's a very complicated thing about increasing your stamina. Uh, your little pink stamina ball, all right? And you have to complete the game several times and go through the journey against the the Colossus, uh, the Colossuses, the Colossi, uh, several times to repeat the cycle until you can reach 
the garden, uh, the garden that you climb to uh, on the top of the cathedral. The point is, Sony, I'm a fan, all right? I'm not an Xbox person, all right? I'm a PlayStation person. You got me. Fix the interface. Let's do an update. Let's do an update. That's all. Thank you. It has landed on Lamar Odom versus Aaron Carter. Langston, take it away. Yeah, okay. I'll be honest. Everybody's been focusing their attention on the insurrection, and I feel like this is a much bigger issue. Jake Paul knocked out mm -hmm. Nate Robinson in two rounds and, and laid him to the ground in a way that black people are going to struggle with for centuries to follow. Like, this is, this is something that's going to go down in our history books. And now there's a new trend that's popping up where a bunch of... Uh, Filthy white boys are, are preparing to now take on our greatest athletes and somehow prove that they are more athletic, more capable, uh, and especially better fighters. And my fear is that this is actually going to end up in a devastating way for Lamar Odom, despite being 6'9", 6'10", and uh, a former NBA champion, he might in fact get knocked out by Aaron him. Carter of all, of all people, not even the best Carter. Aaron Carter is going to knock out Lamar Odom, who's overcome so much. He survived fucking strokes and crack addiction, and now he's going to get knocked out by Aaron Carter, and only the black community is going to be left to suffer through this, and it's all going to, like, it, you know, Dana White's going to get paid off in it. I don't know. It's just, it's very upsetting. I'm not sleeping he could win. well. He could, Lamar Odom could win, but there's no, what is the win here? Aaron Carter is my height. And, and unwell, his family doesn't speak to him anymore. He's, he's what QAnon people are afraid is inside of the Wayfair cabinets. Like, there's no victory <laughs> in knocking out Aaron Carter. <laughs> right. Right. What, what do you win? What, what do you win? You're win supposed here? to win. You're supposed to beat him. Yeah. You're a giant. He's supposed to be in a Wayfair cabinet that you build yourself <laughs> somehow. <laughs> <laughs> he just arrives on top. <laughs> He's the guy who brings it to you. He's sort of the Rumpelstiltskin of Wayfair cabinets. He stands outside of it and he's, ah, look inside. And then, you know, a girl named Rebecca pops out or whatever it is that they think is happening. <laughs> anyway, I'm very upset. It, it's it's I, ruining my sleep. I don't know what to do with these feelings. I don't know what to do either. I don't understand these celebrity uh, um, confrontations. Sure. They're not for me. They're not for me. Yeah. It. it I feel like... It started after that. You remember that claymation show celebrity death match? Yes. Where we theorized what it would be like for these celebrities to fist fight each other and, and murder each other. And then some of them started doing it. Like I have a vague memory of Tanya Harding fighting somebody. Yes. Tanya Harding did fight and then went on to like have multiple fights because it turned out she was pretty good at it. And Screech yeah. well, fought somebody. R.I.P. Screech. R.I.P. Oh, R. I. P. we'll miss you dearly. And, uh, <laughs> you know, all these people just started fighting and it, it turned into a weird thing where we just wanted to see how weird they punched or how uncomfortable they were with uh, getting help from a man in a corner they didn't know. It just all it makes me uncomfortable. And I pray Lamar Odom wins, but I also don't know what the victory is here. And I also think that when we signed up to watch celebrities fight each other and beat each other to a bloody pulp, it was yet another along with. Bill de Blasio dropping the groundhog. Uh, <laughs> bad omen for our society. Langston Kerman, yeah. so good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you. This was fun.